the reigning LMP2 champion. Welcome back. Uh, but back this time with a new team for you for Cool Racing. Why did you choose Cool Racing over the rest of the LMP2 teams on this grid? Hello everyone, it's Ibi here. Um, I'm taking the honor to start the interview, the uh, press conference, sorry. So yeah, great to be back here in the European Le Mans Series Championship. Um, yeah, after a successful uh, championship last year, um, it was yeah, a decision about what's going to be coming up for me next year. Um, and then we were also looking around for teams. Um, cool Racing has been running very competitively uh, by the second half of the season. And for sure in the race, they have a gentleman in the car, so to fight for the overall uh, podium is always difficult, but I've seen promising results from them. And then um, they have also seen my potential. So we have done some testing after the season and then we have came up with you know um, similar objectives, which is to try to win the championship next year in the pro category. And then yeah, the story began and then now we're here first race and everything has gone pretty well so far in Prologue testing, just had F1 this morning, and then I yeah, will keep on pushing and working to prepare for the qualifying race tomorrow. And the whole season, of course, try to fight for the top of the podium and defend the, the championship, my championship, and then, yeah, it'll be fun. This is your third season of LMP2 racing, once in Asia, once in Europe, and you're back here again. Um, and you won both those, uh, those titles. We've got a huge field the biggest prototype racing field in the world outside of the Le Mans 24 hours here between LMP2 and LMP3. When you look up and down this paddock and indeed up and down this row, where do you see the threats coming to from you making a perfect 3 out of 3? I think it looks a lot easier than it is in real life to win a championship and especially to win it in a row. Um, we have put many things together last year uh, in my Asian Le Mans series and European Le Mans series championship. Um, yeah, again, to try to win, for sure, we have to have a good car, which we have, and we have a good lineup. Um, and the fascinating thing is that we always have strong uh, field in the European Le Mans series, especially in LMP2 category. Um, yeah, we have now newcomers from Prima. We have the teams which, which have participated in the championship for years. Um, we have um, yeah, Panis, we have IDEC. Um, Many other teams, Algarve Pro, uh, which have, for whom which have uh, driven for in Asian Le Mans series last year actually. So yeah, there are many strong teams around and many newcomers, and we have to always keep humble. We have to try always to look for more performance and then to be top of the game. And then yeah. Final question is about well, it's the brand you're wearing, wearing proudly uh, in the off season. You were named as Porsche Motorsport Asia Pacific's nominated professional driver for this season. Just how important is that kind of recognition to a young driver with ambition to drive forward your career? I think towards the second half of the season where I have had really good momentum um, and then now obviously we got recognized and we had talks with different manufacturers and at the end we came to I think mutual agreement with Porsche especially in the Asian Pacific region they're really supporting me they want me to succeed and we, we want to write a great story together so now I'm in the fancy Hugo Boss uh, outfit and then um, yeah, I think this season will be important. Um, I have proven that I was able to win the championship last year. Now coming to a new team will be not easy to do it again. But then again, you know, it's uh, it's racing. So I'll, I'll try to do my best and try to prepare myself in the best way possible. And then hopefully to be joining Porsche next year for the um, overall Le Mans fight uh, in the top category. You're back this year with the same team, but with a new teammate, Ben Fiscal. What's the goal, be I ask, this year in what we've already recognised as being a hugely competitive LMP2 category? Yeah, hello also from my side. Um, well, obviously, you know, end of season last year I did the final for Algarve Pro Racing with Richard and, and Ferdi and yeah, we had a really good weekend. We finished on the podium and um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun and then obviously we had many talks with, with different teams, um, but I kind of, yeah, yeah, had the trust in Algarve Pro Racing and um, yeah, that's also kind of why we decided to go with them for the whole LMS season and also 24 Hours of Le Mans. 
as a highlight. Um, yeah, obviously we're just two drivers in, in, in our car and car number 19 with Ben together, but I guess, um, yeah, that's more driving time. So yeah, we'll enjoy it. Um, and well, the goal is always to win, obviously, but um, there's many really competitive teams, very good lineups. So the race on Sunday is going to be long for hours, but we will try our best and see where we end up. Here you are breaking ground again. You've been part of one of those breakthrough all-female crews, but now, in your own right, you're part of a top line and a P2 squad in the general population of the, of the LMS. That must feel pretty good in terms of a step forward. Well, obviously, I mean, in the past two years, I was racing, we were racing with Richard Mina Racing, and um, we were all female crew, first in LMS with the 24 Hours of Le Mans, then last year, WEC, and um, yeah, I think we proved that we can be quick, but um, I think it was time for a change for me and to. I think in a, let's say, mixed lineup and um, not having the whole focus on, on women, um, we're still performing a little bit better. So um, for me, it was important to focus on performance this year. And that's also the reason why we decided to yeah, continue with Agave Pro Racing and um, try to yeah, get some more podiums and some more spraying of champagne this year. It would be no surprise to in the room, you're part of a very famous motorsport dynasty, but there is a gap in that history amongst your family members, and that is Le Mans. How much does that mean as you kind of come up this this pyramid of sports car racing through the LMS? Yeah, obviously, uh, I think both my uncles raced Le Mans, uh, Christian and uh, Max Pappas, and I would grow up watching them race the Daytona 24 hours. That's kind of the race I would always go to every year when I was young to watch them race, and that's what got me into racing, so it was actually endurance. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to be racing the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Uh, it's going to be my first year, and to be representing my family also, uh, it's always uh, an honor. And I think we have a strong lineup to to be able to do well. But it's it's so competitive. The LMS is competitive. The World Endurance Championship as well. There's so many cars. I mean, I think there's 17 on the grid here, um, and even more for Le Mans. So uh, it's going to be uh, pretty crazy. But I think. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I always hear great things about Le Mans. Tell us a little bit about the Inter-Europol team. It's a very much a multinational affair. I think we lose count of how many different nationalities feature, not just in the cars, but also in the back room. How have you found the welcome there and the preparation there for the season? It's been great. Um, actually, my great-grandmother is a little bit, uh, she's Polish, so I have a wow. little bit of Polish blood, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, fitting well with the team. Um, I met my teammates last week, so it was quite late. Um, so I met Fabio and David. They're great guys to work with, both very fast. Um, so I'm sure the lineup is going to be good. The engineering as well, it's very strong. Um, we have Rafa there, who used to work with Toyota. Uh, Gerard is our race engineer, and Sasha is the team manager. And uh, I think the group works very well together. And uh, yeah, first race of the of the year. It's didn't have that much time for, for preparation, but I think we'll, we'll be competitive. You've been part of some really, truly world-class grids in your motorsport career so far. You know how tough it is to win races and win, win titles. How tough does this one look at this point in the season? Yeah, this one's definitely tough. I mean, um, like I said, there's 17 cars, but I'd say there's around seven or eight that can win. And with endurance racing, anything can happen at any time. Uh, you could be leading a race and then have a reliability issue and the guy in second ends up winning. So a lot can happen, but uh, yeah, it's very competitive as always. And uh, But I'm, I'm sure we're going to be up there. I think um, we we have a good package for this weekend and uh, it's all about executing. You know, it's a four-hour race, so it's not as a 24-hour race, but you still got to execute. I think that's the most important. Another full season debut on for the LMS, but moving up from the Michelin de Mont Cup. That's the way this system is supposed to work. You had a great season with Cool last year uh, with uh, Josh Gelton winning at Spa, three pole positions, stepping up now uh, into the LMS with Cool Racing and some great times in testing as well. What's the biggest difference in that step from the Michelin de Mont Cup paddock and over here into the big pit lane? I mean, the biggest difference between Le Mans Cup and LMS is uh, the LMP2 traffic. We have to manage a lot because they, they overtake us quite hard, so we have to manage it. And also the duties because they are fatter, faster than the duty free last year. So that's quite difficult, but I would say that uh, the most difficult is uh, the traffic. 
you're one young driver looking to use LMP3 to come up a career ladder. What would you say to other young drivers, wherever they are in the uh, motorsports career at the moment, about the opportunities that are here in sports car racing, and particularly with the ladder and the step on the ladder that LMP3 offers now? I think now a lot of young drivers want to go to Formula 1 is their own goal, but there is also endurance, which is like very beautiful. You can start from Le Mans Cup and step up to LMS. It's a, it's quite a good good thing to start from Le Mans Cup and step up to LMS. He, I learned a lot of things last year with Cool and uh, in the Le Mans Cup, so very happy to step uh, step up this year in LMS. Final question is about Cool Racing. We saw some some great times from LMP2 cars and LMP3 cars, topping the times in the final session in both classes. What's been going on at Cool Racing to arrive here in such good shape? I mean, since I started motorsport, I was with Cool Racing. I did my first race with them, so now it's a bit like like my family. So I'm very happy to step uh, step up with them. It's uh, such a good team. They they showed it last year with two pole in LMP2 and also in LMP3. So now I think I'm in one uh, in one of the best team in LMP3. So can do even better than last year because they just uh, lose the championship by one point. So we're gonna try to do better this year. Michael Fassbender, of course, from the number 93 Proton Competition Porsche in a, another stacked class in GTE, 12 cars here this weekend. Welcome back, Michael. A third season in the LMS and arriving here on the back of a spectacular race for you uh, in Portimao at the end of last year. It's great to watch that one coming on. Tell us what you've learned about, uh, about the challenges here in those first two years. How are you going to apply that with a third season now with Proton? Um, yeah, it was nice to get the result in Portimao because we were kind of knocking on the door for a while. Um, I suppose the first season for me it was such a you know baptism of fire stepping into um, LMS uh, just because of the traffic. You know, dealing with the LMP2 and LMP3 cars, um, just processing all of that mentally. I found that quite exhausting. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, the first year was was very tricky, and then you know, thankfully, you know, Proton Competition, they're such a an experienced team, and very successful team. So really surrounded by the best people, and then just trying to make you know progress. Obviously, trying to get faster and try and sort of just understand the traffic, manage it better, and um, you know, have have a clean race. And, you know, the objective in Portimao worked out pretty well, which is just try and hang on to the, the leading pack and wait for opportunities. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, it was nice there because uh, it's somewhat of a home track for me. Moved to uh, Portugal about five years ago now, so it was nice. It's a track that I really enjoy and a track that I've got to do some testing at, um, so it's a track that I know. Excellent stuff. It's often been reported your ambition with this program is Le Mans. Is that entirely true or is there more that you want to achieve on this kind of journey before you get there? Well I don't know what else there would be to achieve than Le Mans. I think uh, that was always the goal you know that that's the dream um, and this year it's being realized so it's uh, pretty scary um, also very exciting. I managed to get a test in the prologue last year so I did about 10 laps running around uh, the famous circuit and it's just I didn't realize until I was on the track doing laps just how sort of special it is and what a sort of allure it has as soon as I left the track I just wanted to get back on and, and do some more laps so uh, really excited to go there this year obviously uh, a lot of a lot to learn and a lot of prep before we get there and I just finished filming um, about two weeks ago, so I haven't had a chance to, to step in a car since poured him out. So we've got a lot of catching up to do, but uh, very excited. Millions are going to be able to watch that journey and are going to be able to watch that appearance at Le Mans with the, I should say right now, excellent YouTube series that's been following your progress uh, with Porsche. Are you surprised by the sustained level of interest in this journey? Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, we started off doing something really sort of raw. You know, the idea was to have a series that shows everything and 
the boys are always following us around, even when you know it's moments where you wouldn't necessarily like a camera in your face. Uh, but that that was always the the spirit of it and the essence of it that we could really sort of get a a fly in the wall idea of what it's like for somebody like me coming in with little to sort of no experience and, and starting from the ground level up. Um, I have to say the team that we have is fantastic. The guys are doing a great job. They're running around the place. There's only three of them. And uh, the footage that they get and is, is pretty spectacular. And yeah, I'm surprised and really happy that people have responded the way they have. Um, I suppose it's, it's, it's a great thing that we've been allowed to just sort of do it, as I say, our own way. And, um, and we sort of just built it each season. I feel like it's getting better and better. Um, so, yeah, I'm very proud of, of the boys and the job they've done. Let's show our appreciation for our stars at the front here. <laughs> As we did just hang on for a moment, so I'm sure there's a couple of photographers who'd love just like a quick group shot with you guys uh, with a backdrop here. But now, thank you very much and good luck. Are you going to keep them behind the desk? Yeah. Yeah. Keep them behind the desk. Which so Okay, guys, go straight to me, please. Okay, everyone straight ahead, please. Okay, anybody else want some pictures? We can let you go.